Hello, this is Russ McKay from IBM's Tivoli Service Management Tiger Team. I'm going to take you through a short demonstration on how we've integrated Maximo with BIM information or building information management information. The BIM information is normally generated during the design and architectural phases of a building project and that includes CAD information and information relating to the various objects that the architects have designed into the building. For example an object could be a pump. Uh, the pump will be designed or at least uh, represented in 3D in the Revit model but there will also be some information about the specification of the pump. For example the flow rate, the electric current, the size, the positioning of the holes and various other pieces of information. would also put uh, maintenance cycles and things like that into the Revit model. What we do once we've got the Revit model is generate what's called a COBE model. Now, COBE stands for Construction Operations Building Information Exchange. And this is the spreadsheet that I'm going to open now, which we're going to import into Maximo. So the spreadsheet is automatically generated from tools like Revit. It's a highly hierarchical structure, as you can see here. We start off on the left-hand side, down at the bottom, with the instruction to proceed contract information, information about the facility, the floors in the facility, the spaces on the floors in the facility and how those spaces are zoned out. Uh, we can also have information about the type of space, the components used within the space, system information, assembly information, resources, job information, lots and lots of information. In fact, typically on a reasonable size building you can have hundreds of thousands of lines in your spreadsheet. Now all that information is very useful, but it's not very useful to Maximo. Only certain information is useful for Maximo. So what we tend to do is filter the information during the import process. And the import process is what we're going to do now. I'm going to import a new building model. So that's choosing the building import over here. We're going to add a new name to the project. We'll just call it Russ August 14th project. Kobe import example. Choose a location, <coughs> same as we would normally in Maximo. Location already exists. We'll call it RMAUG. That's going to just prefix all of the locations when we import it into Maximo next thing I'm going to do is decide to validate this import before I do the import. It's always a good idea to validate your import. Uh, chances are there's going to be errors. Even if there are errors, Maximo will still import the information and give you a list in the log of what the errors were and what you need to change. The next thing we're going to do is leave everything as the default and we're going to start the import. Yes, I do want to save my changes. I'm going to export, sorry, I'm going to import from an Excel spreadsheet choose the file, you can see the files on my desktop so the file that I'm interested in is this one here <clears throat> so I've selected the file, we've got it in there I've got a set of options here that I can uh, play around with things like what sort of login level I want to import at uh, and lots of other bits of information you don't need to do a lot with this at the moment remember again this is a demonstration of how we can import the Kobe information into Maximo and this is pretty well set up how you would normally do it you can change things if you need to but I don't think I would at the moment again we can look at what attributes we're going to bring into the system various default information, information about the facilities and we can also look at the log um, when we're doing the import and also after the import so what I do then is hit the validate button and it goes away and does the validation. I'm not going to do that right now, the reason being a validation of this type of spreadsheet will take probably 5 to 10 minutes and um, during a demonstration it's not a good idea to waste 5 or 10 minutes waiting for something to finish. So we're just going to use a, a building model that's already in the system. So that's part one of this demonstration. Uh, part two of the demonstration is going to show you how you can use the information uh, in Maximo to navigate around a typical uh, building during the operational phase.